So first of all, we have the trekking poles. Now the trekking poles, you can't have them in your carry-on. You can, however, store them in a checked bag. So your option here, if you are flying, is to have a checked bag where you can store your trekking poles. Uh, this is the general rule within the US. Now, there are some regulations where you are required to detach the trekking poles into pieces. This is more for international trips, but as far as the US goes, you can have your trekking poles in a checked bag. So that's where the trekking poles. And I will place you right there because I care for you so much. The same rule applies for tent poles and sticks. So these bad boys here, same rule. You cannot have them in your carry-on. You can, however, store them in a checked bag. Now, obviously, the, the tent itself, you can have it in your carry-on if you wish. And the same rule also applies for uh, ice axe. So if you do have an ice axe, you cannot have it in your carry-on, you can store it in your check bag. So all of these items that I have here go into your check bag. I also have a uh, an axe. Every time we actually go camping, we would take this little axe so that we can cut wood if necessary. So same thing applies for this one. And the reason why these items are not allowed in your carry-on is because they fall under the potential weapon category. So make sure that they are all in your checked bag. Make sure that they are stored properly and protected. Like for example, this I feel like it's very, very protected here. It's just safe to use. It's heavy, but it's well protected. It's not going to harm anyone. It's not going to harm you. It's not going to cause some damage in the checked bag. So that's definitely a good option. And you want to do the same with the trekking poles as well. You want to make sure that these sharp edges are protected somehow. So that's for that. Now I'm just gonna go some random picks that I have here. We've got the jet boil or the cooking stove. So there is no issue with the cooking stove as far as I know, you should be fine. However, the fuel canister is not something that you can have, not in your carry-on and not even in the check bag. And same rule applies for insect repellents as well as bear spray and that's why in my previous glacier video i was talking about the possibility to buy or rent bear spray when you get to the park instead so this is that now for crampons which i forgot to mention the mountaineering crampons are also a potential weapon they should go into your check bag if we're talking about trail crampons that are light like this these should be fine they should be fine in your uh, checked bag, they should be fine in your carry-on and again, it's just different from one officer to the other They might ask you not to but basically these two should be fine The mountaineering crampons should however go to your checked bag And I randomly picked walkie-talkies and there's no issue with those either for the carry-on or the checked bag And headlamps, headlamps should be fine There's no issue with the headlamps and just a pro tip when you store the headlamps, just make sure that you remove the batteries first. The reason is the light keeps, you know, hitting stuff and going on and off, and it's just going to consume your battery unnecessary. So yeah, it's just a tip for you. And now when we talk about the potential weapon items, you want to make sure that they are obviously in a checked bag and for the checked bag you can use a duffel bag or you can use your backpack when we did the Inca Trail in Peru I actually used my Osprey backpack as a checked bag which is probably not the best idea it might get damaged um, but what I did with my backpack I actually put it in a thick plastic bag and I secured the whole thing so it doesn't stick to thing and it doesn't get damaged but I think the right thing to do is to have them stored in a duffel bag now we talked about fuel canisters and then we talked about bear spray insect repellents and things that you cannot fly with your option is to either send them from your state to the destination via post office or you can rent them in stores or facilities in the destinations I know for example that REI um, actually rent a lot of gear. When we did the Inca Trail again, we didn't even have to take our trekking pole because there was an option to rent them anyways. We, you could even rent sleeping bags if you want to. 
um, but I just love my trekking poles and I wanted to take them with me but the point is if you're flying somewhere else like Seattle, for example, REI there can accommodate you as far as 10 trekking poles, even ice axe actually. I, I called I called the REI in Seattle the other day asking about ice axe and they said that sure, yeah, they do rent them. The one thing that they don't rent, and I don't know why, is the... Yeah, clumsy. Yeah. The one thing that they don't rent is actually the baby backpacks. I had a friend who was gonna visit me a long time ago and I was thinking about the option to, you know, to rent a baby backpack, but they said they don't rent it. I'm not sure why. Maybe that's a new business idea for you. Yeah, two options for you. You either send your items via post office or you rent them at the destination or you buy them if you have to. And if you don't like sharing stuff with people or stuff that people used before. And this is pretty much it for what I wanted to share with you guys today. So if you do have any questions, let me know in a comment. And I will also put additional resources in the description box from the TSA and just so that you can read about the regulations. And again, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel because we create weekly vlogs and guides and how-to videos about our hiking adventures. Your trekking pals, Habiba and Alex, and we'll see you guys on a new adventure. Bye.